just behind me is Gavranice. We've just come over on the boat from the mainland. It's like a 10 minute boat ride. We're here in February, so it's pretty cold. Uh, it's been raining all day today. Stopped for a little while now, but this is one incredible sight. We've just been inside the chamber looking at the incredible, beautiful, intricate carvings on almost every stone in there. And um, we really do recommend you check this site out. I've got Jim with me, Jim Vieira in the background there. We've been doing a bit of research in Brittany and Howard Crowhurst, who is um, the leading expert on ancient sites in Karnak and Brittany and the whole, um, you know, uh, north northeastern, northwestern part of France and you know it really is quite something it's just such an amazing megalithic place everything here is super sized it's just much bigger much older than you can possibly imagine uh, and it really is quite spectacular and i do recommend people check this out that's the entrance to the morbihan gulf so uh, when you go through there you get into the um, atlantic ocean well there's the morbihan bay <laughs> The Bay of Quiberon, it's called. Right in the distance, what you can see is the uh, is Quiberon. They say there are 365 islands in this Gulf, one for every day of the year. I think it's a bit exaggerated. And so the water level rises and falls at high tides over about five meters. And you can see an island there with two humps. Okay, those two humps have been slightly uh, increased. There are stone constructions on the top which have slightly increased the size of them. Now, if, when you're on the top of the Tumulus Saint Michel in Karnak, the sun rises between those two humps at winter solstice. Yeah. It's a three, four, five triangle between the Tumulus Saint Michel and here. That's the right angle. If you go down to that double island, yeah. Then, and then you draw, you, you trace a line towards the Tumulus Saint Michel. It's an exact right angle. That's the um, island of Air Lanique, and that's a high four-meter stone on the island. But on the other side, there's a double stone circle, an eight-shaped stone circle, which goes down under the water. The visible bit you can see, which actually creates a circle. And then completely under the water, there's a second sort of circle. It's not really a circle. The whole thing added together is like a heart shape. And um, the, the water level was lower, so this initially was all above land. And on the other side, just on the other side of the stone circle, there's a recumbent standing stone, eight meters, made from orthogonite, which is not local. Uh, so, a lot of effort went into building this. Now, on this island, they found thousands and thousands of remains of pottery, um, incredible amounts. Uh, in fact, there's so much pottery there that if, if we were to go onto the island now, we'd only have to sort of uh, scrape a bit and we could find some. And the question is, why is there so much pottery on this island? And the answer is that, um, well, the, the official answer is that it was a pottery factory that they must have created. But that ha means no, has no sort of sense to it. Why would you create thousands of, of articles of pottery on a diff difficultly accessible spot, you know? Uh, so it would seem more like that this pottery is used for something and it reminds us a lot of these potteries you find in Egypt at Saqqara for example uh, which uh, Christopher Dunn reckons are resonance uh, bowls and one wonders if maybe all this smashed pottery is not the remains of some more fragile part of, of this monument. When the monument was discovered in 1832 this was all filled in here. It was like a natural hill. And the man discovered it. His dog went in through a hole. He went in through a hole and went down. And he discovered the chamber from the top. And then it was later, much later, that these, in 1980, that these, this was all excavated here. So the cairn stands above a huge dolmen which is basically 
uh, the chamber. It's 45 and a half feet long and it runs into a single fairly small chamber for Brittany really. Um, and it's almost an exact square and it's about eight feet wide. Uh, there's about some 50 or 52 rough hewn slabs. And it was discovered then that the corridor had been voluntarily filled in. Uh, the monument was voluntarily closed off and hidden like Gebekli Tepe, but around 3,500 BC. So this cairn was, was um, this was all covered with earth and stone and the whole of the corridor was filled in. And all the stones, 29 of these stones have got fantastic engravings on them. So I'll let you discover them first. You go in and, and just walk in and come in like this. Of course, you have to step up and lower your head, which means you're, you're looking at the ground, okay? But if at this time you then lift your head, there's an engraving in here. You have two sort of snake-like shapes here, U-shapes, and in the center their heads are opposing, and between their heads there are these sort of waveforms going from one mouth of the snake to the other. Here in the floor here is one spot where there is no stone. You're on a big stone here. All of the corridor is covered with stones on the floor, but there's a gap here, right? And this gap is right opposite this stone here. And you see these snake shapes, energy shapes coming up out the ground. And you have these ax head shapes here. Right? And you have this horizontal line, which most probably represents the Earth, so this is happening under the Earth. And it's as if the stone has been left here, because this is a spot where energy comes up. Yeah. Right? And the use of these axe heads, um, and their connection with snakes, or, or energy serpentine waveforms like that has been found in the Karnak alignment but with real axes real axes placed in the ground under under the ground is the jade axes uh, these one uh, were they jade they can be made from jade or other substances um, but they were found physically physical axe heads in front of an engraving of snakes on the stone underground so they were placed underground in front of a stone and engraved on the stone with the snake shapes. Right. Stone. All I can say about this stone is that you have three openings, but it, they link behind. So there is this one hole with three openings to it. Huh? It's not three holes, it's one hole. The first point is here. And this line was engraved vertically and then horizontally, like this, and then it went out from there. And so we can see a kind of cross shaped here, right? At winter solstice, what I would say at winter solstice, when you're sitting in the chamber here, the first thing you see is a kind of reddening deep red glow on this particular spot, right here. You're in the dark, you're sitting in total dark, and you see a sort of reddening glow here. And then as the sun, that is just as the first ray of sun hits over the horizon. You get that very red color, dark red. And then that light starts moving like this. As the sun comes up, it starts moving. And at one point, it gets to the end of the, the, the stone, and then you get a kind of very thin, like a laser beam, 
goes through the angle to the angle right into the corner uh, a red laser beam like that goes through to the corner here yeah and moves up onto the stone to a certain height and then as the sun comes up that opens like a door and it comes down a bit like that and it goes from red to yellow as the sun comes up And someone had the idea that in the engravings there may be things that could be dated. And so a couple of years ago, three years ago, I don't know, time goes so fast, they, they scratched in the bottom of the engravings and they found um, organic material dating from 4200 BC. The 1st of May is a very important date, it's 40 days after equinox, it's Beltan, you know, the important. And um, you get synchronicity of the sunrise between Newgrange and here on the 1st of May. So what that means is that someone on the top of this monument watching a sunrise on the 1st of May sees it coming out of the horizon exactly the same time as at Newgrange. Which is a rather strange phenomena. Mm, very strange phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once again, impressive. I think it's 6,500 years old. That's what Howard said. Yeah, for me, it just smacks of like Newgrange and Nelf and Delft and the other sites all around the British Isles. And I just wonder if they were being built at the same time by the same people with the same intentions. They just seem like the carvings are what we see at so many other places, you know. Um, so it always strikes me as like, what do these spirals mean as an energetic thing? You know, I just uh, wish I had a bunch of answers, but I have a bunch of questions, but uh, it's just an amazing place. And they did some carbon dating on some um, uh, matter that was found within one of the stones on the ground. that dated it to something like 4,600 BC. So it's an extremely ancient site and most certainly on par in style, design and construction technique uh, with Newgrange and Nauf in Ireland. So we have to question was there a connection between these two great cultures it that far back? It just it certainly seems like there is. And looking at similar dates, Newgrange may be a, a fraction newer than this, just a fraction, but there are, you know, ideas that it is much, much older. And, you know, this whole kind of culture that was traveling around the whole, the coast of Europe, building these incredible monuments, aligning them to the solstices and equinoxes, and to each other geodetically, there's really something quite profound going on here. It's, well, however you portray it, it's like a lost science that, it doesn't even have to be too mystical, it's just like this understanding of materials and energetics, water, stone, you know, I could tell you, stone is an organic material in my estimation. So you have water, stone, eclipses, solstices, they all, uh, you know, congeal at, at, at particular times to create energetic states that are multi-dimensional if you will I, I don't know basically what they were pointing to but it, it seems like that's what's going on at these different sites something to do with materials and energetics and the heavens and uh, just another site like that you know